Are you talking where on camera? You're videotaping it or? You're barely on camera. <laughs> so uh, normally for the workshops, I start off by having everyone introduce themselves, but you know, with the remote participants and the recording, maybe I'll just, um, I won't bother with that part. But I would like to start off a little bit by asking people to pipe up if you want to online or if you're in the room. Uh, what your experience you've had with voice thread, if any? Zero. 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 Yeah, I didn't even know it was a thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what your goals are? I don't know what it is, so I don't know what my goal is. Okay. Yeah, my understanding is it's a way to take course. things online. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's the basic. Yeah. It's. Uh, I want something to calm me down. <laughs> <laughs> is that... uh, Hi. So yeah, um, so let me uh, go ahead and, and I'll go more into presenter mode and I'll start, uh, I'll start doing screen sharing. Let me, Hi. Hey, Hi. Marie, could you uh, keep track of the chat now and then and make a list of who's, who's in and who's not? I've got the list of who who registered and I want to make sure we're able to follow up with everyone. Voice thread? Over here. So uh, let me go ahead and start screen sharing. Yeah, I'm just going to share the whole desktop. So um, let me make this a little bit bigger. Got some notes. Uh, frankly, the notes are not as good a shape as I would like them to be because I've spent the last week dealing with fires uh, oh, yeah. around yeah. this topic. So uh, you can um, go to this bit.ly address and I'll paste it into the chat. But just re just realize that these notes, I don't feel that like they're complete. I'll be adding to them and I'll send them around to everyone that we've got a record of uh, having hey, been. Keith, Keith, can you hear me? Am I part of the room? You are? Um, Hi, Keith. Hi, you guys. Sorry. I just didn't, I just didn't know how it works. I just no. went, I didn't mean to interrupt. For this first part, uh, yeah, for this first part, um, I'm going to be going through some stuff. So if, um, if you've got your microphone, why don't everyone mute it? If you just go down to the bottom, you can see uh, all the tools. And there'll be some time later for us to discuss maybe. Uh, but I want to have, uh, I want to go through a little bit. Come on. Here. And um, just introduce VoiceThread. Talk about some different use cases of how it can be used other than, I mean, it certainly as a way to take your lecturing online, but there's some other uses for VoiceThread as well. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about how we've got it integrated into Moodle and uh, how you would add it to your course. There's actually four, well, five really different flavors, six really different flavors of VoiceThread activities you can add to your Moodle course. And we'll have some time for some hands-on on work as well. So if you're not familiar with, I, I always have trouble um, figuring out um, how to describe VoiceThread to someone who's not been using it before or seen it before. Oh, let me send the link out to everyone, not just to Marie privately. There you go, everyone should have the, the link. I just, I just posted it too. Thanks. So um, VoiceThread is sort of like a narrated annotated slideshow. That's one way to think about it, but it's much more than that. Wait, what are you, what? Uh, uh, a narrated annotated slideshow. It's a way for you to put slides of media together um, into this VoiceThread activity. You have different ways of commenting on each of the slides. You can draw on the slides as you're talking about them. So it gives you a pretty powerful way for you to present material to your class.
class, but it can be used for lots of other uh, uses as well. And we'll go through some of those. Uh, if you follow this link to the um, showcase at VoiceThread, you'll, you can take a look and see what some VoiceThreads look like. Um, the nice thing, some nice things about VoiceThread, it is totally browser-based. Students don't have to download a Zoom client or any other thing like that. We have it integrated in Moodle. So you don't have to worry about getting a license from CTS. It is just a standard activity in your Moodle course. You can add any one of these different kinds of activities wherever you want in your Moodle course as many times as you want, and it's all under your control. Okay. Uh, there are mobile apps for phone and tablet access to voice threads. So uh, that's, uh, if we look at how our students are using Moodle, if we do Google Analytics on the page hits to our Moodle system, one third of them are iOS devices, iPhones and iPads. One third are Mac OS devices and one third are Windows. So our students really are living more and more in the mobile sphere. So you know, having uh, a mobile app for that your students can look at your voice threads on is, is a plus. Um, it is an asynchronous activity, which means you're not requiring everyone to be online at the same time. But it's a much more rich in experience than a discussion forum activity in Moodle, which is also an asynchronous way to have a conversation. Uh, the fact that you can do uh, webcam commenting, audio commenting, as well as text commenting on these slides make it a much richer media in, uh, conversation than just typing something into a Moodle discussion forum, mm -hmm. as much as I like you know, faculty to use discussion forums. Uh, some uses for VoiceThread, probably most of you are here because you're wondering how am I going to present my lectures to my students when we're not meeting face to face. And that certainly is one use case. But uh, VoiceThread is very popular for language uh, learning <laughs> as a, um, as a language instructor, I can put together some slides of French, French village life, you know, maybe four slides of different scenes of, and have the students get on their webcam or their microphone and talk about these scenes in, to practice their French, and you get those comments. Um, this is a very good way for students to share their class presentations when you're not meeting face to face. Um, and you can actually set up the voice through activity as assignments where you're requiring the students to do this or this and that, and it ties into the middle grade book. Uh, so last little bit of, um, of background. This is an external tool. So we've got our Moodle system here on campus. VoiceThread is a service that we contract with. It's off in the cloud somewhere. And Moodle talks to our VoiceThread license at the VoiceThread space through this common protocol called LTI. You don't need to worry about it. But the, but the thing is that the connection we have between Moodle and VoiceThread allows you to set up a Moodle uh, VoiceThread act activity in your Moodle course. You click on it, you're taken to VoiceThread, and VoiceThread knows who you are. It's Keith Landa coming in, and he has the role of instructor in it for this activity. Or if my, su my student Susan clicks on that same activity, she's taken to VoiceThread without having to authenticate or anything. Uh, VoiceThread knows this is Susan, she's in Keith's class, she has the role of student, therefore this is what she's gonna see. So that's Moodle talking to VoiceThread. VoiceThread, if you set up a graded, activity, uh, VoiceThread will send those grades back to Moodle through this connection and put them in the Moodle gradebook. Do we have to have a gradebook set up? No, okay. no, you don't have to. Uh, if, if you're mainly wanting to say, okay, I'm, uh, I need a way to talk about mitosis to my students, 
I can I can put together a voice thread presentation about that and and add it into my Moodle course. Students can click on it whenever they don't have to be there at 10:30 in the morning. And click on it, and they can hear me talking about my slides and drawing on them and so forth. Or if you've got your your students have their class presentations that they need to share, you can create a space in your Moodle course where everyone can just go to that common space and Susan can say okay here's my presentation that I want to share with the class and Frank here's mine and they're all there and then the students can view each other's they can comment so they on record them. it on their own and then have yep. the recording and then okay yeah and we should assume it's it's easy enough for them to figure out how to do that I mean yeah. my kids I, each one has to give an oral report and it's usually slide point it's usually um powerpoint or yeah. google slides yeah. well actually so I was, it'll, be, uh, it'll be obvious for them I to was figure out how to do talking it. with Shaka a couple of years ago and he had a class where he actually had students give three presentations over the course of a semester he had them do their first presentation as a as a voice thread that they put together ahead of time recorded the the, the comments and the annotations and then they went into class they presented it and took the question and answer and then they were better set up to actually do a full-blown presentation later Will the will you guys be doing offering that though to students that kind of training or is it is it pretty user friendly because well, uh, my, my students have never you, done anything like that. Hey Robin, I'll show you in a minute what's what it's like to create a voice thread uh, activity uh, a presentation. So it's pretty straightforward. Great. So um, so I think that's all all the background information and I've burned through twenty minutes already. No, ten minutes already. Not too bad. Okay. So um, what I want to do is actually so, show some of the nuts and bolts, and we'll talk more about some of the pedagogical uses as we go through this. Um, as I said, there are four different flavors of, of VoiceThread available, but the one flavor actually has three subtypes, so uh, we'll look at that. The, um, I think the place I want to start is to talk about setting up a VoiceThread home version of VoiceThread activity. This is nice because it's all it does is basically provide an anchor in your course to, um, to VoiceThread. So when you add a VoiceThread activity in one of your Moodle courses, VoiceThread creates a corresponding course space for you and your students at VoiceThread. And you, through your Moodle account, have an account at VoiceThread. All of your students through Moodle have an, a, a VoiceThread account. So what this VoiceThread home activity does is pretty much just provides a way to get people to their account space home at VoiceThread. I want to start with that, though, because I want to use that as a way to show you what the VoiceThread interface looks like. And then we'll go into creating a voice thread uh, before we go on to some of the other Moodle activities like sharing a presentation or collecting assignments or requiring students to comment on a uh, voice thread. Um, Can I ask you a question? Sure, Warren. Hey, uh, Warren Lehrer here. Uh, you know, I'm new to Zoom and I'm seeing a red flashing dot that says recording. Is that because you're recording? Or I'm recording, it? yeah. It's not because I'm recording? No. Okay. No. But your comments are now part of the recording for this session. <laughs> That's good for all of us to know, though. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm recording this to the computer here in the TLTC. I will... Um, I will post it to our TLTC YouTube channel. I will chop off maybe some of the beginning discussion and then it will be available for all of you to go back and look at later. And the nice thing about having it posted to YouTube is that you can watch it at 1.5 speed or double speed <laughs> and then you don't have to listen to me quite as long. Can uh, I, I have, I think, only stupid questions. That's okay. Um, is when, when we're saying voice thread, does that mean there's no visual involved? Oh, no, there, there it, is. And does voice thread interact with Zoom? Voice thread would be a separate tool from Zoom. Mm -hmm. Zoom is this synchronous online, we're going to have class together. 
Mm. And synchronous has certain advantages, but it has certain disadvantages as well. Uh, VoiceThread is by its nature more of an asynchronous activity. You post it in your Moodle course, uh, you and your students come to it as your schedule allows. You don't have to force everyone to be online at the same time. Uh, or if someone can't be online at a you know a time when you are, they can come to it to it later. So effective online teaching really relies on a a variety of of synchronous and asynchronous tools. Actually, you can do a very effective online course that has no synchronous component at all. Uh, the synchronous component like Zoom is kind of natural for face-to-face -face faculty who haven't had actual training to do online instruction and go through a whole course design process. But, um, um, and, and these kinds of real-time things are good for developing a sense of online community but you don't really need to have online synchronous activities to do an effective online course. Anyway, uh, let me pop over, uh, let me open up a um, tab for logging into Moodle. And I'll just pop into uh, one of my sandboxes and um, turn editing on. And um, so to add any of these flavors of VoiceThread activity to your Moodle course, just go to the activity selector just like you would to add a, a Moodle assignment or whatever. As I said, uh, VoiceThread is, is a form of external tool, but we hope that it's so popular that we've actually set it up as its own distinct tool type on the activity picker. So you don't have to, you don't have to go through all the rigor removal of selecting an external tool and then figuring out what external tool to use. It looks like it's right under assignment two. It's right under turn it in assignment two. Right. These are all alphabetical, so V oh, as yeah, in VoiceThread. Uh, and I'll click add and you know there are a lot of standard Moodle fields that you fill out here I'm just going to call this uh, VT home link um, you do not have to do anything here because you selected the pre-configured VoiceThread external tool by clicking on the VoiceThread activity it's already pointing to VoiceThread in fact, don't change anything here. Okay. In the shared, in the shared secret part, or in general, you don't know the shared secret. You don't know. Okay, so um, yeah, you don't need to do anything here. You don't need to select a different tool. None of that stuff. Um, if you um, go back, this is what it would look like. The only really thing you want to make a decision about, unless you're using completion tracking or restricting access or some of the other Moodle tools that we're not covering today, the only voice thread decision you really need to make is, do I want to accept grades from the tool or not? And that's under privacy? It's under privacy. Okay. By default, and you cannot change this, Moodle will share the name and the email of the person who is clicking on the activity to VoiceThread, as long as well as the role. So that VoiceThread knows, okay, this is a student coming in from Keith's class, and it's this student, so that if this is a graded assignment, I need to you know, send the grades back attached to that. Um, Keith, can I ask a quick question while sure. we're in there? Um, with turn it in, I get to see who's turning assignments in and when. Will this let me know who's watching the voice thread I've created and not when, this particular just flavor that we're looking at right now, Robin? Um, you can you can. Um, again, we're going to get to it. It's okay. I don't want to interrupt yeah. you. I just yeah. okay. So this is just a connection. So I'm going to unselect accept grade from tool because I'm not going to grade whether students actually go to their voice thread account space right uh, when you unselect that the grade option goes away 
And if I click save and return to course, I now have this voice thread activity that I have decided I want this to be just a link to the voice thread space. So it's not, this is not for a specific assignment. This is just no, your not for general, this. This is just your general thing. So you should put it on like your first page or your top of one. Or, I oftentimes will create this, but keep it hidden. I don't want the, I don't necessarily need my students to go to oh, this, okay. but I want an easy way to get to my account. Okay. So that's one thing I will do is set this up as a, as a hidden, um, a hidden voice thread activity. Uh, Cause when I'm actually putting voice thread activities in there that the yeah. students are going to be doing. How did you hide it? Just the way you would hide any. So you, so if you're going to, Add an activity later. You first have to do this. You don't have to. Oh, okay. I'm doing oh, this for two reasons. Yeah, One, it's a nice you. way. It's nice that you have an access to get to your voice thread home. Right. And two, this gives me a way to go to my voice thread home and spend the next five minutes showing you what the voice thread interface looks like without having to worry about oh, I'm doing this or this or this. Okay. So watch what happens when I click on this the first time. VoiceThread said, okay, I'm going to launch the connection between your Moodle and our VoiceThread server. Uh, but I don't know what kind of a VoiceThread you want me to do. Right? So what I'm going to do is select VoiceThread Home. The first time you go into a VoiceThread activity as an instructor, you determine what kind of a VoiceThread activity it is. I'm, so I'm not doing this along with you because we're going to do it later, right? Right. <laughs> okay. I'm staying silent and letting you show. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I select, uh, this is just a link to my voice at home. I click save and return to course. Now when I click on this link, it is uh, again popping up the connection to voice thread, but now it knows that, oh, just dump Keith into his voice thread account space. So the home is just the Moodle page, or the place in Moodle that you selected to put the voice thread into? Yeah. Because I noticed when you clicked on it, it took you to like, right, to yeah. a maybe a uh, your or what would. So I, I can I can save? I configured this voice thread activity to be nothing more than send this person to their voice thread account. And when I click on it, VoiceThread is going to send it to my VoiceThread account. And there are all the things you did. There, well, no, there are things that I've made, and you're but there are things that have been shared with me. Mm -hmm. There are voice threads that I've subscribed to. So I want to look at the voice threads that I strictly have created. Those would be the ones that are owned by me. And so, you know, I did a voice thread presentation on Europa and the other icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn for my astrobiology course. I did a course, I did a, a voice thread on the central dogma of biology to explain DNA replication and protein synthesis to my, again, to my uh, life in the universe class because they needed to know a little bit how life worked if we're going to look for it elsewhere, things like that. Um, if you go into your voice thread, if you set this up, which we'll do in a couple minutes, and you go into your voice thread account and click on the ones that are owned by me, you should see nothing because you haven't created yeah, mine's, it. Mine's empty. Yours is empty. Okay? Uh, and probably none have been shared with you. Probably none, you probably haven't subscribed to them. But I will point out that everyone, everyone, when you go to your account, has this link to the tutorials that VoiceThread maintains. They're, they are voice threads about how to do voice threads. Okay? So when you create your account, um, look for those tutorials under that category. Actually, you may, you may did these show up? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, automatically came up you weren't clicking things to get them. Nope, no I just no. did what he did which was I went to the tutorials button and mm -hmm. then took me to the tutorials. Yeah. Um, but you'd have to I see two three classes you have to create a fresh one for each class or they can all well, work to the same. Yeah, let me show you. The other thing you can Sorry. see on your interface here is if you if you either select show my groups 
just under the tutorials link there, or if you just click this to expand this little panel, yeah, you will see all of your groups and courses. Okay. Whenever you add a VoiceThread activity to any of your Moodle courses, VoiceThread, and, and someone clicks on it, and VoiceThread knows, oh, there's a Moodle course at purchase that is using VoiceThread, VoiceThread will create a corresponding course space at VoiceThread. So we were in my Land of Sandbox 5 when I set this up, right? Mm -hmm. Strictly the act of adding a voice thread to that sandbox space created this course space for me and my students to share at voice thread. Gotcha. So you, I don't, to, you have to add it for each class though. Because I see only the yeah, one well, added for my one class. Yeah, you could you could put this kind of a link to my home, my voice thread home in every each. one of your classes. Gotcha. You could do it once and just use that. I mean, you just need one one route to get to your account. Once but the door is open, there are all of your stuff is there. Yeah. For all your classes. Yeah. 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 That's cool. But if you did a you know different presentations in different classes, everyone that you added a voice for presentation activity to would have a corresponding uh, course space here. Um, I guess there's. Uh, I mean, there, Keith, yeah. Keith is. Or, well, never mind. I'll, I'm writing a note. Okay. Go ahead. So uh, there's not a lot to look at under your profile, but you can, you can look at a little bit. Um, I won't show you mine because it's weird because I'm overall manager and all that other stuff. But uh, I mean, basically, if you've got the, um, you know, the ability to look at different groups of, of voice threads, you've got the ability to browse uh, to find different voice threads, and you've got this link here to create. Um, so let me wait for a couple of minutes. Uh, anyone who's in their Moodle course and wants to follow these steps, and we'll have to see about. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious because it says something about an X, so that's different. Yeah, you're probably you. being directed to access it through the app. Right, right, right. Yeah. Got it. But if I write my. If you write your, if you're at workstation, yeah. you could do this. Oh. But. Yeah. Uh, let me pop open the chat and see what's been going on. Okay, so um, okay. So again, I'm going to actually well, I'll leave this open. Okay. So yeah, uh, again, the uh, steps were to add an activity, select the VoiceThread activity, fill out the basic feature, uh, you know, put in the name that you want, you can put a description on it just like any other Moodle activity, save it, click on it the first time and select VoiceThread Home as the activity type and it will take you to your account. Um, I assume that this is going to be connected with like a PowerPoint or some sort of a Yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. Either, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, that's probably enough of an interlude. If you've created a you know, voice thread link, fine. How do you actually go about creating a voice thread? Uh, or if we go back and look to see what the voice threads actually look like. If we go back to look at the ones that uh, I own, if we, um, if I click to edit this uh, voice thread on Central Dogma, you can see well, it's got a number of slides. And the slides, uh, I've named some of the slides. I haven't bothered naming all the slides. You can see uh, you got the ability to uh, name, to put a title on your voice thread. You can edit the, the, the slides. You can delete them. You can move them around. You can add additional slides. How did I get these slides here? Yeah. <laughs> you you could well and and actually let me look at one here. Um, actually, let me go back.
can you, like in Moodle, you could just drag it in. But how does that work here? Well, give me a minute. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. If you play it, you can see that what I've got is, uh, you know, a slide. First, I want to provide. I've got audio comments here. Probably on some of these slides, I've driven, I've, I've drawn on the slide as I'm talking. Yeah. This is the I hate drawing with a mouse, yeah, but you, but you can. That's why I might suggest. What I'm going to be presenting. Okay, that's enough listening to me. Let's speak to you a bit. We know the situation. Um, uh, I might suggest that you work on your laptop or your desktop to import the slides you want to import, but then switch over to your tablet and actually do the commenting on your tablet. But then you can use the app, right? Then you can use the app and okay. you can use your stylus. It's a lot nicer drawing on your slides with an Apple Pencil on your, on your iPad than uh, drawing with a mouse. So the app is called uh, VoiceThread? Just called VoiceThread. Uh, let's quit out of this. So if I wanted to create a new voice thread, you might imagine you click on the create link there. And it is, it's a three-step process. Um, first, it's adding your media. And if I just click on this add media option, you can see that um, you could create a slide where you just turn the webcam on and you talk. And that will be the media that is on that slide. Yeah, it's not the way I normally would do it. The same thing with, uh, uh, I mean, I could take a photo and have the first slide be a photo of me uh, from the webcam with some introductory comments that I add using my computer microphone later. There are different media sources. So you can pull up imagery from the New York Public Library. VoiceThread has, for some reason, this connection to the New York Public Library, which I have never used, but I think I find it kind of cool. Uh, you can you know, search Flickr for uh, uh, Creative Commons, Creative Commons licensed uh, images and so forth. Um, but primarily what most of us are going to do is, I have this PowerPoint presentation that I would normally do next week in class. And I want to start with that. So um, you can either, you can just drag and drop that PowerPoint onto the upload screen. Um, or if you've already clicked on the add media button, you can hit uh, my computer. And let me go. Uh... So here's a PowerPoint. Now I mostly use Google Doc uh, slideshows myself, but um, and that Google Drive link might actually allow you to pull it in directly. Um, but I know a lot of faculty use PowerPoint or so I've Keynote. done what? Keynote. Keynote should work. Whatever it recognizes as a presentation or save it as a, as a PDF. I'm going to actually select the PowerPoint. I choose it and uh, give it a title. Um, let's see, what was this? I don't know, Mars presentation. I forget actually which one I selected. Give it a description if you want to, click save. And uh, it's got the title, but now you see these little gears working. And so it's going through, should have, I should have picked a shorter presentation. I think mm -hmm. this one had like uh, 12 or 13 slides. It's going to take those slides and it's going to convert each one of them into a voice thread slide. Now, how many of you use fancy, complicated transitions and effects in PowerPoint? Not, not I. Okay, because they're not going to come over. Okay, so if you've got, you've got a slide that is a set of bullet points, you want them to come in one at a time, 
turn it into five slides with a you know successive set of bullet points. Wait, what is it that's not going to come over? The, Any the, formatting? The um, the uh, slide animations, like the uh, animated uh, um, list of um, oh, early rain on Mars. Like if you've got a, a PowerPoint slide where you've got you know four Gosh. bullet points on it and you have them come in one at a time. Oh, I see. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Voice Ridge is going to flatten that. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So in Keynote, uh, dissolve transitions and timed uh, link. Yeah. Dissolve Five transitions aren't going to be applicable to your voice Ridge. Are not. Are not. Okay. So Keith, I, I'm following you completely. If a student wants to create a voice thread, they go through that portal you showed us and they can create it or they go through a different Well, um, I mean, you're showing us how to create them. I yeah. Think, and maybe get so the um, you, you don't necessarily have to set up the, the link that we set up here for your students to be able to create a voice thread. I just have to send them a set of instructions. Well, uh, what I would suggest, and we'll get to that in a minute, you create a class space voice thread activity. That's just a common bucket for everyone to put their voice threads in. When Susan clicks on that, she will see if, if Frank and you and some others have added their voice threads already, she will have an option to add her voice thread, which will either be select a voice thread she's made or create one from scratch. Why wouldn't she go through the portal you just showed us how to She could. Uh, if you could keep that open and uh, not hide right. it. If you want your students to be able to go to their Otherwise, voice. What else would I do? That's what I'm, I'm just lost. All, all of the voice thread activities ultimately also give everyone a, a place to get to their voice thread account. Okay, so I'm going to create that portal that you showed us, the initial one that you hid. Yeah. But that's going to create a similar place where students can click on it for VoiceThread and make their own. The portal link that we created takes anyone from your Moodle course to VoiceThread to their account space. Okay, so if I don't hide it, I'm going to tell my students. Go here, that. create it. Yeah. Again, for me, it's just students who use it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, but, but when we get to the point where we are creating the bucket for everyone to add their, their uh, VoiceThreads to, I will show you how from there everyone can get to their voice through their account space anyway. From the assignment as opposed yeah. to. All right, I'll have to see it. Yeah. So you've imported your media. Uh, I won't bother commenting on all of these slides, but let's say I want to, to uh, add some commentary to this one. I can click on comment and. Um, here is, here's the slide. Down here at the bottom is this little thing for adding. Um, it says make a comment. You click on it, you can see all of the different kinds of commenting that can be done. So on this slide, I'm just going to uh, click record an audio comment. I'll hit, I'll hit record. It's going to use this uh, snowball microphone here. Oh, let me go into. Won't work in Safari. That doesn't work in Safari. Interesting. Not a big problem. Sandbox five. Go to my voice thread home. So here's this presentation I I just added the the media to. Uh, I can click edit to go back into editing mode. I can click uh, I can select that slide. So comment, select to do an audio comment, allow voice thread access to the microphone. 
Okay, so this is a slide showing some of the current day morphology we see on Mars that is presumably representative of a time billions of years ago when Mars actually had free flowing waters creating rivers that carved out these channels. And if I wanted to, I could select a pencil here and actually you know, kind of highlight what I'm talking about. See how these see this kind of pattern here where you've got many branches coming down uh, to one that's very characteristic of um, um, river, oh, of river courses <laughs> and uh, you can see that by default these annotations slowly fade away so that you don't you know completely mess up your screen as you're talking and then you know if I wanted to highlight this greater later I don't have all this other annotation so that's, that's enough babbling uh, on this side. Uh, I click stop recording. It's going to play it back to me. Okay, so this is a slide showing some of the current day morphology we see on the Okay, that, that sounds good enough. Totally it's representative do of It'll do the drawing. Years ago when Mars actually had free flowing waters creating rivers that carved out these channels. And if I wanted to, I could select a pencil here and actually you know, kind of highlight what I'm talking about. See how these... No, that looks okay to me. See this kind of quick save. Yeah, Keith, can you, show where the, can you show where the pencil is again, please? Yeah, uh, yeah. let me go to another slide. Um, let me go to this slide. Um, oh, I see. I got this it. slide is better. Let me make a comment on this slide. This time I will use the webcam. And uh, get the same, get ready to record. It's recording. Here, the, when you're recording, the pencil will show up down here at the bottom of the screen. Do you see that uh, remotely, yeah. Robin? You can select different colors. And uh, what this shows is that uh, if you've got low resolution data, these river courses look pretty stubby. And that caused a lot of confusion. But when you send more advanced uh, orbiters to Mars that have better cameras, you can see that what you can see under low resolution is actually part of a much more involved branching system um, strengthening the argument that four billion years ago it rained on Mars. There was enough rain to collect in these uh, watersheds to create these river basins, which I find fascinating. My students, I don't know if they find it fascinating, mm -hmm. but I find that fascinating. So question that dissolved as you were speaking and then is the recording actually showing that classroom? Recording here yeah, the uh, the recording, which now this will show up not just as an audio comment, but it, it's going to take a little bit long. I should have been less wordy with my webcam going, because it'll take a little bit of a while to process it. It will show up as a webcam comment versus an audio comment. You can also, you or your students, can just click on add a text comment, and there will be a text comment on the slide. But is it going to show you sitting and talking or this? The it's recording oh. here. The, when you're recording, the pencil will show up down here at the bottom of the screen. Do you see that uh, remotely? Yeah. Okay. Enough of that. Um, so let me go back to my notes here. So, but w I guess I don't understand why it asked for your webcam because it didn't include a pic anything from the webcam. It did. If you look here. Oh, I see. I see it. Okay, that little students, meeting. Now, yep. you see us gathered around the, if you're sitting in front of your webcam, it would be your talking head. Right. Giving the comment. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about talking heads. How valuable instructionally are talking heads? Sometimes it's nice. Don't overdo it. I mean, the audio comment is, the audio part of the comment is the important part. And then drawing. And the drawing. Uh, and the drawing would be much nicer if I did it on my iPad with uh, a stylus. 
Uh, if, what's the trick of logging into that? We'll, we'll, let's talk about that later offline. Um, VoiceThread doesn't know your purchase password. So when you try to use yeah, the mobile they, they, device, yeah. you have to get VoiceThread to send you a password that you can put in. Okay. Right. Yeah. So um, you know, if you were doing a fully online course and you wanted to do a voice thread at the beginning to welcome everyone to the class, yeah, do a talking head there so that you know students Do know you, you get a feel for you and so forth. But after that, it pretty much just eats up bandwidth for the students without adding much value. So I tend to do more audio comments than webcam comments. Um, and let me let me just see here. Um, so creating voice threads, adding media. Uh, you know, most of us will be uploading presentations. Um, commenting options. Cap captioning your voice threads is very important. Uh, annotating your slides, we talked about that. Um, so if I go back to the one that I did the audio comment on here, and um, you see here's this audio comment. Uh, it's got a trash can. If I really hated the sound of my voice, I could get rid of that. Um, I can click on the closed captions option in edit mode and it will tell me, okay, here's your opportunity to upload a caption file. We won't take the time to go through the different four flavors of caption files, but I really recommend, um, what I mo mostly work with are SRT files. Basically is a very simple text file. Um, the first line would be timestamp zero colon zero zero colon zero zero two zero colon zero zero colon zero five if you want you know captions to show up in the first five seconds of the of the clip and then it is a line of text that has the caption a line break a line break and the next time code the next okay so it's a very simple straightforward text file format uh, if you are doing um, narration like this whether with your webcam or an audio comment and you've got um, you know students who can't hear that narration but can pull up the closed captions that will make your voice thread accessible can I just clarify, so you need to upload a text file? Yeah. It doesn't translate speech into text. Well, if you've got money, uh, you can Trans order voice. Or well, you could, you could, here different ways of handling it. You could write a script for each slide. Record your narration from the script. Then you're all set with uh, the text. You chop it up into the pieces and the time codes when you want it to be there. Upload that as a text file as, uh, with a SRT filing extension. You're golden. Not a, it's not like Word. You can't cut and paste it into. No. No. Okay. It has to be a file that you upload. You could. But you can save as and change it into that file. Type yeah. That's SRT. Yeah. That's right. You could. And how do you access the SRT file? Mm. I don't, yeah, is it drop down or something? Is that, is that, do, I, do we all have that when we're saving? You would write up your text in Word, for example, as a Word document. Mm -hmm. You would read that text to narrate the slide. And from the commenting part, you're all set because you've got the right. slide there, you've got the, your commentary. You would take your Word document, chop it or cut, put in line breaks to chop up the text into manageable chunks with the appropriate time codes. In Word, save it as a plain text file. Don't save it as a rich text file. It has to be saved as a plain text file, which will have a .txt extension. Then you take that, you know, slide three captions.txt file and change the file name extension to slide captions 3.srt. It's still the same text file, uh -huh. 
but the extension indicates, oh, this is a caption file. Oh, I should process it as a caption save, file when it gets up. Save as in dot .srt. Yep. Okay. Uh, I mean, you could be more free flowing as you're commenting, like I typically am, which is not best practice. Uh, I suppose you could play back the slide to your phone when you've got Dragon dictation up and running and have, or just the Apple Siri, you know, text recognition and have it convert what it hears from what you said on the slide to text. You have to clean that up probably, but then you can do the same thing. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's a lot about um, creating voice threads. I just want to do one other thing here. If um, you have created your voice thread, you've, you've uploaded your slides, you've commented on them, you've, dri you've drawn on them, you've uploaded your caption files. The last thing you might want to play around with here are the playback options. So when you are looking at your presentation, you can um, select playback settings from this options menu. And um, you can look through these. You can, maybe you don't want your students to use webcams for commenting. You can unselect that. Um, you do want or don't want students to be able to comment. Maybe you just want to give them a presentation. You don't want them commenting. Right. Take that off. Maybe you do want to use the presentation as the basis for a conversation. So you do want commenting. Well, if you do want commenting, do you want threaded commenting? So that when one student makes a comment, another student can actually make a comment to that comment rather than having the comments just be lined up in one big long line. That's what threaded comments. That's what thread comments are. And is that like a chat that appears down the side or something, or how does that work? Well, uh, if, if we look back at this slide here under commenting or, or under playback. Um, okay, so this is a slide. You see there's only one comment here. If I allowed my students to comment and, and 12 out of the 25 students commented, they would all have little comment icons around here. If you allow so, you're, so it's democratic and that they could be talking over you while you're presenting the presenter. Not over. They're always sequential or threaded. Okay. So okay. So they have to wait until they voice, it wouldn't then play a student's voice until you were done. Right. Yeah. And and you as the author of the commenting okay, on this slide, you know, your your take on the slide will always be there first. And then, um, okay, so we're rapidly burning through the time here. I would recommend you all get into your voice ed accounts and create. But I do want to show you just a couple of the other. Um, I won't. I won't take the time to actually go through the voice ed assignment activity, but. Um, You've spent all this time creating a voice thread. How do you make sure that that's the one you want your students to watch and comment on if you want them to comment on in week seven? Um, if you uh, go into your course and I've got, I'll turn editing on. And here I want to add a voice thread activity, but this time I want them to, uh, you know, watch this uh, voice thread on central dogma. Uh, I'm not going to get grades on this one. And I click save and return to course. And first time I go into it, again, it's going to make me pick. And what I'm going to pick is, I want, come on, voice thread. I want, uh, I want to display an individual specific voice thread to my students. So I select that option. Then it's going to ask me, okay. What was the option called? Individual voice thread. Individual voice thread. 
okay, well, which one was that? Well, that was Central Dogma. So I select that. I want to share it with the class. It's as straightforward as that. Okay. okay I, this is where the questions are. And I, I'm going to leave, so this will be my last question, I promise. Um, so I'm, I'm, I have a course where half the students have done their own reports and the other half don't, haven't. So my, and I, again, I'm following up on my last question. Clearly, I'm just having yeah. a visualization problem. How does the student create a voice thread that then, that then has a prompt on it the entire class has to watch it? Well, I guess the stu she can't edit the course. No. What I would suggest you do is let's add that third kind of voice thread activity. Share your VT presentations here. Again, I'm not necessarily going to accept grades because I just want to create a bucket where all the students are putting their voice threads. Yeah, that's how you create the bucket. If I click save and return to course, and if I go in that the first time, there's only one of the three options that we haven't done yet. Okay, so this if you accept uh, grades, the is, is course, course view. view. If you accept grades, there will be an assignment builder option that will show up that we clearly don't have time to go into. Mm -hmm. But if I select cor course view, and return to course, then um, whoever goes in here, whether it's you or your students, will see uh, an option to select a voice thread to share. Uh, add, add your own. So the student would click on add their own. And then they have the option of, well, if they've already created one, they can select it. But at this point, many of your students probably haven't. Right, so they can go straight into the creation. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. I'm going to thank you so much. Okay. Can you just click that? I'd love to see what they're going to mm -hmm. see. Same thing. Same thing. Add media. Oh, yeah. so, they can, so they can drag and drop their PowerPoint. Yeah. They can drag and drop their PowerPoint. They can do that webcam and they're going to yeah. take their presentation. Yes. Okay. Yep. So uh, we're. There to walk them through it. That's the. Well, I think I think when we get Zoom, I think you can do it. Walk them through it with Zoom. Yeah. Because I think what mm -hmm. everything that he's we've seen, all those people on Zoom are seeing it. Mm -hmm. And there will be the right. recording of this session as well. You can point your students to. Although it's more focused on teachers. Teachers, but I mean we can certainly do one for students. Keith, so, I have a couple of questions I've been I'm waiting for, so tell don't don't leave without giving me a chance to ask them. Okay. We'll do. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm doing nothing but uh, <laughs> but continuity planning uh, the last uh, several weeks now. Uh, but I mean, basically, uh, VoiceThread is nice because it's got all these features. It lives in Moodle. They don't have everyone can just access your presentations, your student presentations. You can have the conversation about media uh, slides uh, through this VoiceThread activity. Um, you know, it is you add the VoiceThread activity, then you tell VoiceThread what kind of an activity you want it to be. You get those three choices. Got those. If you if you turn off accept grades, you've got those three choices: a link to your voice thread home. Uh, a link to a specific. I've got a specific thread. voice thread I'm showing you, and I'm the teacher, and you're going to watch it. Or here's a bucket where we can all share all our, our, our. Okay. If you did leave accept grades from the tool turned on, there would be that fourth option which would be the assignment builder. If you clicked on that, you would have three options. You can have an assignment where all you do is require students to watch a voice thread and they get X amount of points for it. For it. Okay. Okay. Again, you specify the voice thread. They have to go in. It will, if they watch it, they will take those points and transfer it to the Moodle gradebook. I don't know if that's punitive or not, but mm -hmm. that's available. Okay. Uh, there is an option where you require them to comment on a voice thread that you've put together. So going back to that language learning, I'm a French instructor. I've created this voice thread that has four scenes of French life. I myself do not comment on them at all, except maybe I have a text prompt to say, you know, 
in your best French, discuss what you see here. And the students add, a, add an audio comment. And then you go into the activity later, you see the comments that Susan has made and the comments that Frank has made. And you can listen to them and give them a grade. And the third type is, I'm creating an assignment where you are required to create a voice thread and share it to me as the instructor. That's different than sharing it to the whole class for everyone to, it is kind of like turning in a voice thread to me. Mm. And then I can see the list of students who have turned them in, I can watch them, I can give them a grade, and those grades go into the grade book. But you could just do it without the grade book, without the assignment, and just keep notes and, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we've had voice thread forever. It's a very powerful tool. It's too bad that it's taken a campus emergency <laughs> to get all these people using it. All these yeah. people using it, but it has a lot of possibilities for it. Robin, your questions. Robin? She's gone. No, she's still here. Question. Uh, I, un see I unmuted you, Robin. I, we didn't hear you. Oh, I said. Um, I, I uploaded a couple of them. Um, are there size limitations for the uploads? Um, can I see who has viewed a required uh, VT and when? Um, because I have a lot of students who, for example, yeah. don't do readings that are assigned, that kind of thing. So for the first one, none functionally that I've encountered. Okay. Uh, and I'll just leave it at that. If you, if you run into a situation where you're getting a message from VoiceThread saying, you know, uh, exceeded capacity, let me know, but I, I don't know of any. In terms okay. of, of uh, ensuring that students watch a particular voice thread at a given time, you've got two approaches. One is to add the, just the plain vanilla link to a specific voice thread that we went through in, in, uh, in the workshop and then use the, the logging and activity tracking feature in, in Moodle to, to determine who has actually opened it up or not. The second more involved approach is to use the assignment builder fourth option that we didn't look at in the workshop and have the assignment to be for all your students to watch a specific voice thread. That will certainly track who has watched it and who hasn't whether you get timestamps on that or not, I don't know because I've not used that flavor of the voice. Thread. Okay. I mean, I may sit it outside on Moodle and track it that way. That yeah. may be better. And Moodle, um, Moodle has, has great logging and activity completion tracking tools. So, okay. Yeah. Other questions were when you went to other media sources, um, I wondered if there's like a population like Pinterest or do you know Pinterest? I do know Pinterest. I actually and, am a male Pinterest user. And are there uh, are there a bunch of users out there that we might be able to communicate? You know, is there? Or I might find a community of graphic design um, VT people where that are sharing resources. I, yeah, I don't. There may or may not to, be a population. There, find, there may or may not be a population of VT users on Pinterest. That's something that would need to be researched. If there is. You'd have that, to. That's take, not what you know, I'm asking. What I'm asking is, when you went to other media sources and saw, and you went to like. Pinterest um, is not a direct link option. That's not. That's not what I'm asking. I was using okay. Pinterest as an as an example of a community. You, when we went to other media sources, and you showed like five places to go to find, um, like the public library and something else. Yeah. Um, are there are there communities out there? Because there was a search tool where I might find you know, whatever it is, RISD or um, uh, the Cooper Hewitt has uh, VTs that, um, so see, see this, how is that populated? Um, um, and can I expand that, that uh, group no, of- this meetings? list is what it is. And this basically allows you to search Flickr. Okay, I thought I might be able, like I said, I thought I might be able to go to like Smithsonian and add it as a media source or something. But uh, um, so that, 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 and then, um, oh, and then can we archive uh, old uh, courses? That's my last question. Uh, old Moodle courses? 
Ooh. No, old uh, these voice threads. I saw your long list, and I wondered if there's a oh. way to edit that. A way to clean that up? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if there's okay. a, a good way to. Okay, do we're away. We're away a ways away from that, but I just wondered. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so ran over a bit, but um, let me stop screen sharing. Thanks, Keith. Yep. Oh, do you have time to just show how to log into the? Um... Sure. Um, let me stop the recording. Okay.